Let us be grateful for the time that the Lord has risen and be mindful of his presence among us in his beautiful world. Each and every morning, we are blessed to be able to wake up in the warming elements of God's nature. We, his people, are able to appreciate the many glorious attributes of his creation as we watch the flowers blossom this vibrant spring. We are nurtured by his unconditional love, safe from the dangers of sin and steered away from the path of evil. His righteous being is always there to forgive us when we falter and protect us from harm. This is all possible because he sent his only son to die for our sins. Believe it or not, Easter is already upon us. Looking back at this school year, in light of the season, what have you done to emahia e malama ikokia kuo, or cultivate and care for God's creations? As you look back on this year, realize that it's not too late to continue to apply that in your life and let it shine through your words, actions, and beliefs. Easter is a time of hope and of thanksgiving because God has not only risen, but he has also proven to us that he is infinite and he is forever. I like to think of Easter like a metaphor for God. Through difficult times, even when we doubt him, he will always rise up and deliver us from evil in the end. Just like Christmas, this is yet another, another pivotal holiday with much reason behind the industry's eggs and bunnies that we are so used to seeing. Where is Jesus on the cross? The purpose of the holiday is not a large bunny, rather it is God and his greatness. In my opinion, recognizing God's greatness should not only lie within what I am telling you. I think that the purpose of this season is not just learning about what was done in the interest of mankind, but also taking into consideration how it will and has affected you and how you will let your life be shaped by this event. Dear Heavenly Father who art in heaven, God, mahalo for giving us another day on this earth, your earth. Mahalo for loving us and bringing us together here in this moment. God, thank you for your steadfast loyalty and your patience as you are with us despite our faults, despite our wrongdoings, and despite our setbacks. Thank you for loving us and always being with us even when we think we are alone because of our sins. But most of all, Keokuo, mahalo for your son, Jesus Christ, who you sent into this world to die for our sins, so that all of us may be forgiven. Your son, Jesus Christ, who we celebrate this Easter Sunday, as he was resurrected three days after his crucifixion and united with you in heaven. Mahalo, Keokuo, for this Easter, we put everything in your hands, God, and we love you, Keakua. Aloha kakahiaka kako. Our scripture today, for today reminds us of the great sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, a sacrifice given for each of us. We also remember the victory of Jesus as he defeats death three days after giving himself as a sacrifice. I read the story of Jesus' death and resurrection from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 44 to 46 and chapter 24, verse 5 and 6. Let us hear the word of the Lord read both Mako'olelo Hawai'i, Ame Ka'olelo Pele Kaniyo. Kabuke o luka mokuna iva ka lua kumama kolu, na pauku kumaha kumama ha, ahiki i kana ha kumama ono. Ahiki ono o kohora, he poli maluna o kohonua apau, ahiki i ka iva o kohora. O hoa poli ia hoi kala, ana hai i hola mawaina konu ka paku o kalua kini. A ka hea a kula o yesu me ka leo nui i a kula, e kama koe loko a ko mau lima ke vaiho aku nei au i ko u uhane. A pau kana o lelo ana ia, ma ke i hola ia. Ka puke o luka mo kuna iwa ka lua kumamaha na pauku e lima a e ono. Veli veli i hola, ho i lako, a kulo i hola ke alo i kalepo, i maila lawa i a lako. No ke aha la o ko e imi ai i ka mea ola i waina o ka poe make. A ole oia ma ane i, a ka wa ala a e nei ia. E hoa manao i kana i olelo mai ai ya o ko ya ia ma gale laia. Luke chapter 23 verses 44 to 46. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtains of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last breath. Luke chapter 24, verses 5 and 6. In their fright, the woman bowed down with the faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. 
Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. Thanks be to God for the reading and understanding of his holy scripture. Thank you all for joining us and for viewing our Easter service this year. Easter in the life of the church is this really interesting time because it's a time we love to celebrate uh, because every Christian loves that we follow a God that's still alive, that's still well, and he's living, and we get to celebrate his defeat of death. But leading up to Easter, there's repentance, there's forgiveness, there's grace that is needed, grace that is warranted. And sometimes in our lives, we all get into this situation where we wonder and where we question, does someone truly love us? Recently, I came across this story about this family, and it talked about the method of adoption. And many people have sought adoption as an option uh, to bring forth or to raise a child in our world. But what people fail to realize until they actually go through the adoption process is that it's very costly. It takes a long time because there's, we like to think there's a lot of kids that are in need of adopting, but there's even more people who want to adopt. And so you have to stand and wait in line until it's your turn. Uh, you have to pay. Sometimes if you're going to a foreign country to adopt a child, then it costs flights, it costs paperwork, it costs administrative costs. And there's a lot of things that go into the process of adoption. And so sometimes in the adoption process, right, people aren't as fortunate as they dream that they might be when they begin the adoption process. But there's this one family, this single family, it's the Williams family. And they've adopted many children. They've adopted four children. And when you initially hear the story and you hear of the struggle that it takes to, to complete an adoption process, right? Some people question, like, how come I couldn't even get one and these guys got four children? Well, the catch with the Williams family is every child that they have adopted is a child of special needs, right? Many of, or one of them was born with Down syndrome. The other three have birth defects that were detected early on. And many times in life, we kind of wonder like these children, like these children who suffer, special needs children, who often question, does someone love them? Right? The Williams family has been able to uh, welcome in these four children into a part of their family, graft them in, and let them know that they are indeed valued, they are indeed loved. And sometimes we question that about ourselves. Maybe on the outside, we look like we have it all together. As students here at Kamehameha, all of you are bright young students. And in appearance, it might seem like people would be jealous of us, of the, the gifts that we have, of the things that we've been afforded, of the blessings that God has given to us. But deep inside, for many of us, we wonder, just like these children, does anyone see worth in us? Does anyone see value in us? One of the most awesome things about following Jesus and about following God who sent his son for all of us is that Jesus experienced life just as we experience. Right? In John chapter 11, two single words denote how much Jesus experienced life just like us when it says that Jesus wept, Jesus cried, just like each and every one of us. In Philippians chapter 2, it says this about Jesus it says who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage a verse later it says and being found in appearance as man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death right God came in the flesh God came so that people could touch him so that people could touch his garments God came so that people could sit at dinner with him God came so that God could weep alongside of his friends. God came and God gave of himself completely to the point of death. Right? There's this desire in us and this wondering that we all have. Are we loved? Are we valued? And God saw us worth enough that he decided he was going to send his one and only precious son to come and to die for each and every one of us. One of the things that makes Jesus different, that makes God different, the, the Christian God, right? I know that there's a lot of other gods, but one of the things that makes it markedly different 
than all the other religions in the world is this is the only one where God reached down to the people and God saved the people. And so when we come into Easter, right, we come into it with this focus that sometimes we have on our defects, our faults. Why is it that no one loves us? Why is it that no one values us? But God looked down at us and God saw value, God saw worth, God saw, God saw something special and something that deserves saving. And God decided to save us. And we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be uh, well put together. We don't have to have all the answers. Right? The Bible tells us that all we need is a contrite heart and a contrite spirit, willing to say, God, we are in need of you. Please help us. In the, the, the story of the resurrection, one of the things I love about the story of the resurrection, especially in the Gospel of Mark, the way that it captures it, is that when the, the people that we most expect, the disciples and the women who follow Jesus, we would think they've been hearing Jesus tell people for a long time at this point in time that he was going to die, he was going to suffer, and three days later he was going to rise. And we would think that when Jesus died, these people would remember that, and these people would remember, oh, I remember Jesus telling all of us that this would happen but they don't remember. They don't forget the people that we think, if anybody gets the story, it should be these people that are with Jesus all the time. And they forget it. And they forget it quite often. But in Mark chapter 16, verse 8, when it tells the story, it uses the following phrases to describe the women who go to the tomb. It says that they were trembling, they were bewildered, they were afraid. In Luke 24, which was part of the scripture text that was read for us this morning, it says, in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. Right? Jesus takes us in all shapes, all forms, all state of mind. Right? These people who should have known better, they did it. They were trembling. They were bewildered. They were afraid. Right? They didn't know what to do. And so they simply just fell down when they found the empty tomb. But the greatest part, about the gospel message, about the good news of Jesus Christ. is Jesus came for all of us. And some of us might think, man, I'm so far away, I don't even know anything about Jesus. And that's okay. Right? This is a process that we go through, that we all go through together in order to get closer to the cross, to get closer to a merciful God, to a God who loves us. Right? And sometimes people feel like, if I become a Christian, then that means I have to be perfect. That doesn't mean you have to be perfect. It means we strive for perfection. But it means we also acknowledge that we don't get everything right all the time. And we have a God that can forgive us, a God that can give us grace, that can give us love, and a God that allows us to get back up and to try again. The two greatest commandments in the Bible, as Jesus pointed them out, was to love God and to love one another. And these words that Jesus spoke, the only reason these words have power, the only reason these words have hope and have love in them is because God did the greatest miracle of all. God defeated death. This is a story that I have invested my life into. This is a story that I believe with my entire being. And this is an invitation to all of you. Not all of you have to accept this invitation, but for those of you that want to, for those of you that are curious to know more about God, to know more about the God I love, to know more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we're going to put up a link, and we're going to put it down in the comment section of our YouTube channel, and we invite you to fill out this form just to indicate to us that you want to learn more about Jesus, that you want to give your life over to Jesus, whatever it is that you are curious about God. See, because I can stand here on the video and I can tell you about Jesus, I can tell you about God, but it doesn't matter at all until we connect, until we kuka kuka, until we build relationships with one another. Right? Jesus made a difference on his 12 disciples because he spent time with them, he ate with them, he talked with them, he prayed with them. Right, and these are the kinds of things that is at the heart of ministry, the kinds of things that we want to do. And so on this Easter weekend, as we remember Jesus Christ, it's an open invitation to all of you 
that want to know more about Jesus, that want to know more about God, that want to ask questions that haven't been able to ask questions. We invite you to fill out our Google form, send us your information, someone will be in touch with you, and we will figure out a way to spend time with you, to sit down, to talk story. If it is indeed, in fact, in your heart's desire to know Jesus more, know that just like the Williams family who accepts all children of any kind never saw their defect, that God doesn't see your defect, that God doesn't see your fault, that God sees you as his precious child and is waiting with open arms for you to welcome him in. Mahalo for listening. Mahalo for being a part of our Easter service this morning. Uh, again, fill out the form. Let us know if you're curious, if you want to know more. Mahalo e kua no na po mai ka i apau. Makai no ka makua me kikiki a me ka uhane e mulele. Amen.
Let us pray. Nayahova oi em ho mai ka imai a ema lama mai. The Lord bless you and keep you. Dear our gracious and heavenly Father, thank you for always being here throughout our struggles and blessing us with your presence. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, for we know we have done wrong. Na Yehova e kau mai i kamala malamo o kona maka maluna iho, ai loko mai ka i mai ya oi. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Dear Lord, help us to bask in your presence and to find love and comfort in your caring arms. Let us turn our faces towards you and our backs toward all other concerns in our lives to fully embrace every part of your grace. Na Yehovah e maliu mai ya oi, a e haavi mai maluno. Heavenly Father, we thank you for shining your countenance on us and giving us peace in a world that's filled with strife and tension uh, and bothersome people, Lord. You continue to be with us. You continue to forgive us of our sins. You continue to give us a sense of peace uh, to know that all is well and all is well because you sent your son to die for each and every one of us. Mahalo e ke akua no na po mai kai apau, makai noa o ka haku yesu. Amen. Amen.